Obi-Wan Kenobi is the six-part miniseries on Disney Plus that acts as a bridge between the prequels and the original trilogy. It marries both fans of the trilogies together in perfect harmony once and for all. Not really. It's, it's mediocre at best, and I'm being generous. Obi-Wan Kenobi takes place, what's that ghost Qui-Gon Jinn who's cameoing in this episode for five seconds for no reason? Oh yes, if you're watching this video, you should make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Post tons of these videos all the time. Would love to have you. Qui-Gon, would love to have you. Bye. If you've been wondering like I haven't what took place on Tatooine all those years before Luke became a prepubescent teenager, <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi has you covered. We see Kenobi work on the moisture farms raking the sand dunes, bullseye and womp rats. He's doing it all. Actually, he doesn't do any of that. That probably would have been more realistic to how things played out in Lucas's mind, but not Disney's. Ewan McGregor is back, baby, as Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he's facing off against his former Padawan, Anakin. But unlike that epic battle in episode three of the prequel trilogy, or episode four's hunt and peck adventure fight, this time, it's personal. This show promises another one-on-one -on -one cage match between Kenobi and Skywalker, AKA Darth Vader. And for the most part, that's the best, but not great. The Darth Vader stuff, however, most of the time it's pretty epic. Episode five is definitely the highlight. It's only because of a few small moments with Vader. He pulls down a transportation ship, rips open the hull, and even fights against one of the new characters we have, a, a Sith apprentice of sorts. I don't know what her name is. Uh, Reva, sister, big sister three, sister, sister, sister with Tia and Tamara and Reva. Anyway, at one point he makes her his bitch. And it's, it's a very cool sequence, a very cool lightsaber battle, and the only cool one in the entire six episode arc. But Adam, you stupid ass, you just said a little bit ago there was a tease of another one on one showdown between the greatest Jedis ever. Well, yeah, it, it's not good. I'm sorry. I, I know people were going off online about it, but the way the director shoots this thing, it's like she strapped a GoPro to a pigeon and lit the thing on fire. The camera is all over the place. So when they're fighting with lightsabers, the camera's like, so what is the point of this show? We already know where things end up. What interesting things can they really give us in between episode three and episode four? Uh, the answer is not much. Okay, we, we already know the stakes. We already know no one of real consequence is gonna die here. So the script really needs to get to the emotional core of these characters. Obi-Wan, for instance, has lost basically all contact with the Force, turning him into an old man John Wick, who spends most of the battles flipping dudes over his shoulder over and over again. The story gives us morsels of him struggling to get connection again, but I never felt anything for the guy. Which is really sad to say, because Ewan McGregor was easily the highlight for me when it came to those prequel movies. And I guess I owe Lucas a bit of an apology for bashing his terrible wooden dialogue in the prequel films. It can get worse. It does get worse. It Obi-Wan Kenobi proves that. Some of the dialogue on display here is embarrassing, but nothing compared to the moment to moments in each episode. There's always one scene that is just so head scratchingly bad. I just can't comprehend how it made it past the director, past the editor, past all the executives that watched and greenlit it. Then again, they probably just don't care if they're counting their money anyways. One such example happens in episode two, where we see a young Princess Leia frolicking in the woods when she comes across some very sketchy individuals, one of which is Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers, because I don't know, I guess now is the time in his career where he needs to stretch those acting chops. She runs away from them, going half a mile an hour, <laughs> ducking under tree branches that are super thin little twigs, and guys that can clearly see these approaching branches are like, whoa, <laughs> uh, curse you. I saw more plausible situations in Baby's Day Out. Another such example, and a lot of this really comes down to just where the camera's placed and how it's directed. Obi-Wan Kenobi's in an aquarium hallway. 
I don't really know what's going on. And um, the, the glass, for starters, is breakable by blasters. That seems like an oversight, but we'll move past it. Anyways, stormtroopers are approaching him, and he's like, Ugh, I'm a useless piece of shit now in this, and I can't do anything. I don't know my powers. So the stormtroopers, who can clearly see him as they're approaching, don't notice that he just ducks behind the beam on the side? Now, granted, I know they have terrible aim, but... Come on. Now, some people will say, Adam, you're just being a hater. The original trilogy and the prequels had plenty of silly nonsense going on. Well, yeah, they did, but they didn't take themselves... Si well, I'm not going to defend the prequels. I don't, I don't like them. But the original trilogy was a pulpy sci-fi action adventure. One final silly moment, and this is by far the most spectacular stupidity I've ever seen on screen. Obi-Wan conveniently gets a trench coat from one of the Resistance friends, puts it on, and has little Leia walk by his side. Like their kids on shoulders trying to sneak into an R-rated movie undetected. He's just walking with this big bulge on the side of his leg, like doo doo doo. Hello, hello fellow bad guys. There's people everywhere. He's the only dude wearing a trench coat. And the best part is they're outed like 30 seconds later anyways. What was the point of this? Why did they think it was a good idea? Just have him get spotted right away without the trench coat. Come on! Now, I'm not naive to the commentary online. I've seen a lot of the hate that the actress has been getting Riva for her performance in this film. They're saying her acting's bad. I, I, didn't, I didn't get that impression, but I will say this. She's one of those actresses who just kind of has a funny face. And I don't mean ugly. She's a pretty woman. I mean... I think she would be really good at a comedy role because there's certain actors where I look at them and I can't help but like smile for some reason. I don't know if it's their expression or how they carry themselves, but there's something about her where I'm just like, <laughs> she's gonna make me laugh right now, isn't she? She's just one second away from throwing out some lame joke about the force, but she never did. She played things very seriously the whole time. Her arc is easily the most compelling of the things in this. I like that they went back to the younglings and that whole awful scenario. However, the convenience trope of all of this is just too much to handle. She's left for dead and she gets away again. Obi-Wan lets Darth Vader go again. Why? Wh what? Why? Oh, because the script says we can't kill him, obviously. So let's have him do this big one-on-one -on -one confrontation for a second, well, it's really a third since Anyway, for the second time in chronological, and then we'll just have Obi-Wan leave? What sense does that make? What sense does any of it make? Again, I managed to watch all of this by myself. My family didn't have any interest in this one after the disaster that was the Book of Boba Fett. I think they're still on board for Mando. I think we still have them for that, but they're gone with the rest of the Star Wars TV crap. And I can't blame them. I watched this. I had like marginal interest most of the time. Uh, half of it was hate watching, the other half was just sheer interest in what kind of shit show they were gonna produce. And for the most part, it was kind of a mediocre mess. I feel like old man Luke Skywalker sucking at the teat of that alien cow on the island planet. We, we've milked this thing dry. You've heard my saucy opinions, now I wanna hear yours. What did you think about this sequel slash prequel? at the same time. Are you, were you invested? Do you want to see more misadventures from Kenobi? Or do you think enough is enough? You got one final fight between these two legends. It's time to move on. Let me know. Like the video if you like the video and feel free to subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie and TV show related content here each and every week. I'd love to have you stick around. May the force be with you. Goodbye. Wow, what an amazing time to be alive. Disney giving us all these amazing shows and all these offerings we didn't even know we wanted. What's next? Maybe a colorful Dexy Jet spinoff. You know, that alien chef from episode, I don't know, two, I think? We could see him slaving away in the kitchen, making up grub. Who knows what fun characters will show up? Maybe Jango Fett. Maybe my beautiful, sweet Padme, because this would be a, a prequel of the prequels. That's, we need to go back further. That's what we need to do. And you know what? You need to become a Patreon right now on patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies and say, Adam, I love what you're doing here. Here's a dollar a month. Here's $10 a month. Here's $20 a month. Screw it. I got money and you need it. Clearly you're, you're out here pandering. You're out here pleading. You can also be a member right here via the YouTube join button and it works kind of the same way. You get exclusive access to videos. You get little emoticons, things of that nature. 
and you're supporting a you're supporting a creator. And I'd appreciate it. Thanks.